In the first lab video for chapter 11, we talked very generally about frequency response and used a passive low-pass filter as an example of using a circuit's frequency response in a design. In this video, we'll talk about filtering in a little more detail. We'll also discuss some practical implementation aspects of filtering. Specifically, we'll compare active and passive filters. Our comparison of active and passive filters will focus on the effects of loading these filters. Most sub-circuits, and filters in particular, are part of a larger system. They're connected to other circuits and components. These interconnections can make the filter behave differently than it does when it's operated in isolation. Active filters, and active circuits in general, tend to be less sensitive to these interactions so that we can design and implement different portions of an overall system independently and still have a reasonable expectation that they will behave themselves once they're interconnected. For our example, we'll compare our low-pass filter from the first lab video of this chapter with an active operational amplifier-based circuit which has the same magnitude response. We'll examine the effect of adding a load, a resistor, on the behavior of each of these filters. In this video, I'll use only first-order low-pass filters as examples. The same general concepts, however, apply to high-pass filters and higher-order filters. Low-pass filters have a relatively high magnitude response at low frequencies and a low magnitude response at high frequencies. This is a plot of a typical first-order low-pass filter's magnitude response. The DC gain is fairly high and the high frequency gain goes to zero. The cutoff frequency of a filter is defined as the frequency where the magnitude response is 1 over root 2 times the maximum magnitude response of the filter. As I mentioned in the introduction, our primary purpose in this video will be to compare the behavior of passive and active filters. These two filters have exactly the same magnitude response. The active filter, however, contains an operational amplifier and an extra resistor. Why would we bother to create a circuit that's so much more complex and expensive unless there was a significant benefit? The answer is that the active filter performs a couple of important purposes. First, the power supplies of the operational amplifier provide the ability for the circuit to provide power at its output. This means that the filter will be less susceptible to loading effects, as we'll see later in this video, and that the filter can have a gain that's greater than one. Since the passive filter can't create energy, the output voltage must always be less than or equal to the input voltage. The active filter doesn't have this restriction. It's possible for the output voltage of an active filter to be significantly higher than the input voltage. Secondly, the high input impedance of the operational amplifier can allow us to design a circuit with very high input resistance. This means that we don't necessarily need to draw much current from the input voltage. This can be very important in instrumentation system applications where our input voltage might be provided by a sensor, which can't put out much power at all. Both of the circuits on the previous slide have the same magnitude response. 1 over RC divided by the square root of omega squared plus 1 over RC squared. However, what happens when we add a load to our circuit? For our load, we'll add a resistor to the output of the filter. In the case of our passive filter, it's easy to see that the equivalent resistance seen by the capacitor changes. Therefore, the cutoff frequency of the circuit changes. The R terms in this equation are equivalent resistances seen by the capacitor. However, for the active circuit, adding a load resistance does not change the magnitude response. That's because the circuit will maintain the same output voltage. And the operational amplifier, through its power supplies, will provide any current necessary to maintain this output voltage regardless of the load resistance. Within reason, of course. Here's our passive filter. It's the same filter we used in the first lab video of chapter 11. We have a 1 kilo ohm resistor, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. We're applying a voltage across the two with channel 1 of our waveform generator. We're measuring the total voltage with channel 1 of the scope, and we're measuring the voltage across the capacitor with channel 2 of our oscilloscope. I'll apply a 1 kilohertz sinusoidal signal with a 4 volt amplitude. Our output signal looks like this. Now let's add the load resistor to the circuit and watch the effect on the signal. The output signal from our filter changed significantly. If we designed our circuit to have a particular response at this frequency, which we would normally do, we'd get a nasty surprise if we hadn't taken the load into account. Here's our active filter. 
Our feedback capacitor is here. The resistor that's in parallel with our capacitor is here. This is the resistor between our input and the inverting operational amplifier input. We're applying voltage to this with channel 1 over the waveform generator. We're measuring our input with channel 1 of the oscilloscope and we're measuring our output with channel 2 of the oscilloscope. Now this circuit has the same magnitude response as our previous passive circuit. However, it's an inverting voltage amplifier, so there's a sign change on the output. I'm accounting for that sign change by reversing the leads on channel 2 of the oscilloscope. Since it's an active filter, the first thing we need to do is apply power to our operational amplifiers. That's done. I'm going to apply the same 1 kilohertz frequency signal. It's a sinusoid with a 4 volt amplitude. Clicking on run, this is our measured output from the filter. Now let me put in my resistor and our output doesn't change at all. 